conducted since the inception of the Firearms Control Act. The litigation issues that are actually currently still pending. Then, then we will talk about the state of readiness in terms of the South African police preparing for the amnesty itself. The last part will also be including the risks and the mitigations thereof to be able to make sure that we mitigate on those challenges that we have experienced in the previous amnesty that we had. In terms of the purpose then, the purpose is to bring the Portfolio Committee on Police on the draft notice of the declaration of amnesty in terms of Section 139 of the Firearms Control Act and also to outline the processes in that regard. Most importantly, to indicate to the House or to the Portfolio Committee how far did we go in terms of preparing ourselves for the amnesty project. With a background, as I've indicated, the Firearms Control Act, Act number 60 of 2000, came into operation in 2004. It was actually replacing the Firearms and Ammunition Act 75 of 1969. The purpose of this act, therefore, is to enhance the constitutional right to life and bodily integrity to prevent the proliferation of illegal possessed firearms and by providing for the removal of those firearms from society and by improving control over legally possessed firearms to prevent crime involving the use of firearms. This talks to the serious crimes in terms of the, fire, the crime statistics that we have seen. Enable the state of, to remove illegal possessed firearms from society to control the supply, possession, safe storage, transfer and use of firearms and to detect and punish the negligent or criminal use of firearms. To establish a comprehensive and effect, effective system of firearm control and management. To ensure the effective monitoring and enforcement of legislation pertaining to the control of firearms. That is basically the purpose of the Act that is in front of us, which is actually the Act 60 of 2000, 2000, the Firearms Control Act. In terms of the section of the same Act, the Firearm Control Act, the amnesty means an indemnity against prosecution for the unlawful possession of firearms or ammunition. Therefore, when we're talking about the amnesty of the, of, of, of the firearms, which we are saying the minister can declare in terms of the act after the consultation and approval of the, of the parliament, we're talking about those illegal firearms that the people can hand in and they will not be able, they will not be prosecuted. But however, it also covers the legally possessed firearms where people have licensed for those firearms, but they are they are saying they no longer want the firearms, then they want to surrender those firearms to the state. In terms of the same act, sec uh, section 131, subsection A provides that the Minister of the Police may by notice in the ga Gazette declare an amnesty if the amnesty may result in the reduction of the number of illegal possessed firearms in, South, in South Africa and in the Republic and is in the public interest. Like I've indicated, the crime states that 80 if 80 percent if not more than 80 with the crime states or where serious crimes were reported firearms has been used and as, as an instrument to commit such crime um, therefore if for us to be able to reduce such we should actually start with a, a, a the circulation in the country of those firearms and amnesty is the vehicle to 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 achieve that Section 139 of Two Firearms Control Act also provides that such amnesty will only be valid if they approve, if it's approved by the parliament. And the amnesty must specify the period during which the person may apply for amnesty and must specify the conditions under which the amnesty may apply. So in the next bullet, I'm indicating the process that it has since commenced in 2017. Honorable Kronewald can confirm to that there has been some most of time that we have we came here to present the same amnesty but however due to the changes in the leadership the process could not be finalized so there has been some engagement with the previous uh, portfolio committee around the amnesty since 2017 so the recent one was also submitted through to i mean to the parliament through the relevant structures with a proposed date and the conditions as as indicated now a person who surrendered firearm or ammunition in compliance with this notice is indemnifi indemnified against prosecution only for the unlawful possession of such illegal firearms and ammunition. So what it says, it covers now the point that I've highlighted in red, that 
if the pers if the firearm was used in the commission of crime, such as murder and robbery, the prosecution will still continue. But however, if the person is having a firearm that is illegally possessed, so he cannot or she can she will not be prosecuted for such. In terms of the uh, in terms of this section 134 subsection 4a of the mentioned act, person who surrenders this illegal firearm may apply for licenses to possess the same. Therefore, it talks to about the a situation where we can be able to trace the ownership of that of that of that firearm. It allows the people then to be able to put in an application, but the the necessary processes will still continue in terms of checking whether the person must have the the, con the competencies, complete the 271s, which will be considered by the relevant uh, office and be approved as such. So that will be the other processes if those people that qualify to apply, apply for such. The project plan in that regard has been developed and costed, as I was indicating, that we were doing that to ensure that there is a proper implementation and monitoring. And we also have a steering committee that is consisting of the DNCs and the relevant divisional commissioners to make sure that the process is, is actually well monitored. The objective of the pr uh, the, ob the objective of the amnesty is to to reduce the number of Ill illegally possessed firearms in circulation in the country, to provide firearm owners with the opportunity to hand in unwanted firearms. This is actually coming in the situation where I was talking to the legally possessed firearms. Then they can be able to give, to hand in, they have the opportunity to hand in unwanted firearms. To prevent crime and violence and to promote safety, to address the fundamental causes of crime in order to effectively protect the communities. To ensure living, uh, people living in South Africa feel safe and have no fear of crime. So, in terms of the successes of the previous amnesty, we had, you can see, it's quite a long time that you didn't have an amnesty. It's almost, a, a, it's almost 10 years. It's nine going to 10 years. The two amnesties that we had in, since the inception of this, of this act was the one in 2005 and the one in 2010. In 2005, the total number of 80,454 firearms were handed in or surrendered. And in 2010 was 42,329. And if you can see in terms of the graph, the green one, green one uh, representing the illegal and the, uh, uh, the orange one representing the legally, legally owned firearms. You can see the figures of the people that are actually surrendering the legally firearms which are no longer wanted is actually higher than the one that is talking to the uh, illegally, fi illegally owned firearms. So coming now to the issue of the litigations, as Mr. Grunewald was, was also talking to it, and I think it was also raised in the previous, in the previous uh, uh, presentation or sitting that we had. We, we, we tried to summarize the litigations that we, we, we deemed it thorny in terms of the amnesty, but however, I must indicate that they have nothing to do with the amnesty. We have a case of a South African Hunters and Game Conversation Association, where now it was on the basis of a migration from the old act to the new act, which is the Act 60 of, of 2000, where they were challenging the constitutionality of Schedule 1 of the Act. In that case, the interim order was issued in 2009 and is still in operation where it says people who are in possession of the green licenses, we call them as we call them, they are legally in possession of, of, the, of the license. Therefore, they, they are not subjected to the renewal, which is the case with the new one. Then we have another case which talks again to South African Hunters and Game uh, Conversation Association. That is the case of 2007. This case came, up, came about after we have realized that we were sitting with a number of, of, of firearms which were, of which the owners failed to renew their licenses. We issued a, a, a directive which was actually telling the provinces or directing the provinces on what to do to handle those firearms. However, we were interdicted by the same um, uh, association where they took us to court. But in this case, they were actually challenging Section 24 and Section 28. The 24 is the one that, it, that says that the owner 
uh, of the firearm license should renew the firearm license within 90 days before the expiry. And section 28 is the one that says if the firearm license has not been renewed within that specific period or there was no compliance in terms of the act, then the validity of that license lapsed. So we were taken to the constitutional court. However, the constitutional court ruled in our favor that section 24 and section 28 is constitutional. Then we came back and started preparing because it was constitutional that they, they, the firearms that were not renewed, they were illegally possessed. It is there in the judgment. When we were busy trying to, to, to prepare for that, is then that we get um, the, 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 the litigation from the court, uh, gun owners of South Africa. In this case, they were indicate, uh, uh, interdicting subs from receiving the firearms so for which licenses have expired. And it must be noted that it is contrary to what the, which is contrary to what the constitutional uh, uh, court pronounced on. But however, uh, the Houghton North High Court granted the relief. Uh, as a result, uh, SAPS is also appealing that. And we know in terms of, of legal um, issues that if you appeal an order, then the order will, the, 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 the appeal suspends the order. But however, we were, co we were advised by the council that we should not confuse the members on the ground. We should find a way on how to work it out. So that is basically that. But what I can indicate is that there was never at any stage any court in the South African, in the, in the Republic of South Africa, that actually interdicted the minister from de uh, proclaiming the amnesty. Now, uh, moving towards the state of readiness, as I've indicated that we have been preparing to say uh, once it is approved, then we can be able to kickstart with the processes. We have the project plan that is consisting of those five phases that talks to the planning, the implementation, reporting and monitoring, the destruction as well as the debriefing. So the planning part of it, as I've indicated, it was just, it is just to ensure that once it is approved by parliament, then all the provinces and the stations are actually ready to implement. What we have done, uh, we, we have, we have, we have a, pr a project plan which consists of all relevant role, role players with, with an action plan that is developed in terms of the work breakdown structure. We also have developed the process flow. We developed the guidelines that talks to what steps must be, must be done when the person is, is, uh, is surrounding the firearm at the, at, the, at, the, at the police station. In that guidelines, we also take a note of all the other challenges that we have experienced in the organization where the firearms get lost in the hands of the police, either in, in the, in the SAP dating or during the destruction processes. So these guidelines covers all the aspects. We included the transportation um, uh, uh, instruction and guidelines. We also included the screening on vetting of those people that will be working with during the amnesty as designated amnesty officials and SAP dating officials. We also have developed the criteria for the appointment of such people, identification of also the centralized storage facilities so that we also do away with a uh, stockpiling at the police station, which can, which can actually create a risk at the police station. We also have developed the checklist that will guide the station on what is it that they have to check to ensure that all the processes have been captured. The process flow that I've, I've indicated, I'll be able to touch on it when I, pr I, I, I move on with my presentation. But this, uh, um, uh, this, this um, uh, process flow will be printed in a poster that will be displayed in all the, SC, uh, the CSC so that the members can be able to refer to it if maybe they're getting lost. The total number of the storage facilities that we have identified, especially the centralized, because the, mo the, the, the plan is to have to not, to not to have more firearms sitting at the station. So those firearms will be transferred to a central, tra centralized storage facilities that have been identified by the station, the, the, by the province and also the fact that a security assessment in that regard has been done. Then in a, on the issue of, of, the fire, of the stations, we also 
gave an instruction to the provinces to conduct a risk assessment and identify the stations that should be excluded from the amnesty on the basis of the previous experiences of the attacks or where the firearms have been stolen and, and other things. Then we, we got a total number of 46 stations that will be excluded on the basis of the reports that we got from the provinces. Uh, in terms of the planning moving forward, maybe just to indicate that we also have developed a communication plan which with an intensified marketing of the Amnesty project where we will be able to use electronic and printed media. We will also be involving the community uh, policy structures to be able to communicate and relay the message to the community. And we also have a relevant code that has been allocated specifically for the Amnesty project within the EFR uh, register, uh, EFRS system, which is the enhanced firearm register system, so that we can be able to monitor uh, the, pro the 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 the, submit the surrendered firearms. We also have um, identified people. Uh, Amnesty officials have been trained who have been trained in the IB system, IBs uh, uh, testing, uh, which will be done, which has been done by forensic. This is actually just to make sure that if we have a lot of firearms that need to be IB tested, tested, that we cannot be able to delay the process. We also have um, engaged crime intelligence in terms of the screening and the vetting of the members. So far, we have 1,620 members that are screened. We have 109 vetted, and we're still in the process of 789 that is actually in the process. But however, the process will continue as as we identify the need. The detective will be um, also be established. The detective team will also be established upon the announcement of the amnesty and basically to investigate those cases where the firearms have been used in the commission of crime. As I've indicated that the other crimes, they cannot be um, indemnified. Uh, the two workshops that we have conducted with the flesh commanders during 2017 and 18, we also have done one in 2019 to prepare the provinces in terms of the processes and it will be rolled out to the provinces. They are just ready at any time to move with the, with the, with the process. The process floor is, is in front of you. This is the process floor that I said it will be, pr it will be uh, printed as in a poster which will be uh, displayed in the, S in, uh, the SC SC SCS, which is the uh, Community Safety Center, Community Service Center. But maybe just to indicate that uh, what I want to emphasize here is more about the number of days because now we're talking about the risk that is there. Then it will say that once the person comes in hand the firearms, there will be different forms that will be completed, forfeited to the state and surrendered there will be a different form but then the people that are intending to to apply for the relicensing of such firearms will also be given an opportunity well we'll say uh, within 14 days they have to apply for that license and complete the necessary document which is uh, sap 271 but then it will move in terms of the administration what i want to indicate mostly on this process floor is that uh, the firearm, once it's received from the police station, the station will have only 14 days to finalize the administrative processes to check, to complete the necessary document, to complete the necessary registers, to check where and verify where the, or the origin of firearms, to capture it accordingly on the system. Then from there, within 14 days, it must move to a centralized storage, which is more secured. In that cent centralized storage, which is identified by the provinces, it will only be staying there, I mean, it, it, it will be given seven days for the forensic um, people, FSL, to do the IBIS testing. So the IBIS test testing must be done within seven days. And after seven days, we after 30 days, we must get the result. Is what they indicated that 30 days is enough for them to be able to give us an indication of whether this firearm has, posi has tested positive or has tested negative. It has, if it has, posit uh, it has tested positive, then uh, the detectives will be activated. Depending on the level of, of the investigation, uh, hawks will also be involved. So the other process is the administration part of it in terms of capturing it and updating it on the system. 
The implementation part of it then, it will talk to once it has been approved and it has been uh, gazetted by the minister in this case, then we will be able to start with our process because we cannot start with the communication and marketing as I've indicated before we get the approval. Then we'll start with the marketing and, and, and engaging the community around the dates of the amnesty. And then we will also talk to the NCC of instruction where the, 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 the communication processes on what is supposed to be done to other province and the provincial and other province and the station will be highlighted. We will implement the process flow and the checklist and establish the task teams that I've, in, I've, I've, I've spoken about. We also have already established the inquiry desk. Uh, the inquiry desk will also be intensified and be able to also include or handle the queries that are coming through in terms of the amnesty. We will activate the detective services for the purpose of investigation. So the, fir the, the third part, the, fir the third phase is more about um, the monitoring phase that will be done on court daily in terms of uh, the, the, the daily, weekly and monthly reports that will have to be submitted through the relevant structures and will also monitor the successes or the other challenges that we might have experienced in that regard. In, in relation to the implementation thereof. And we will also monitor the investigation part of it in terms of those that have uh, uh, tested positive. And once all the processes have been done, then we will go to the next phase where we're going to be talking to the destruction of firearms. The destruction of firearms in terms of the Firearms Control Act 149 subsection 2, it says it's the responsibility of the registrar to destroy firearms forfeited to the state within six months of the date of forfeiture. Therefore, after six months, we will be able to go back and say, let's gazette, which then the gazetting will be done by the national commissioner. The difference between the two gazette, the gazette for the amnesty and the gazette of the, of the, of the destruction is that the gazette of the amnesty is done by the minister after the approval by the parliament. But, but the, the destruction, of the firearm is this is gazetted by the national commissioner therefore after the all these processes we will be able to do the destruction of firearms actually just to address the stockpiling because it's key in preventing the firearms from reaching the illegal hands so that will be the process that will be done auditing of firearms uh, gazetting them updating them them on the system and distracting the firearms then eventually we will have a debriefing where we will send in the reports to the authorities including the portfolio committee on the successes of the uh, amnesty itself as we are preparing we 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 tend to check on the previous uh, amnesties and we also checked on the current challenges that the organization is facing one of the issues that were um, uh, normally comes in when you're talking about the firearms is the case of Prince Law. We know the Prince, Prince Law who was convicted for the theft of firearms that were supposed to be distracted. And we also have experienced some challenges in terms of the attacks at the police station. And we also have some few stations where firearms was, was stolen from the SAP 13. So in order for us to be able to deal with those issues, when we were dealing with the issues of risks, we took note of those and we tried to address them with the, with the risks plan that we are having. The first one was the theft of firearms, as I've indicated, with the process flow that we have put in place is also trying to address that because we don't want firearms to take long at the police station. And the process of distraction was also changed so that we can be able to distract the firearms as quickly as possible. The vetting of members who are working with those firearms, like the Prince Lewis and the others, they were not vetted, but this time we're saying they must be vetted and screened so that they can be able, to, we can know exactly that we're working with the right people in that environment. The damages of the uh, uh, central storage uh, of, of the firearms, the central storage facilities is, is enough to be able to pack the firearms properly so, so that even if the people want to apply for those firearms, the firearms are not damaged. The delay in the IBIS testing, we, we were going to be training additional members in the IBIS testing. We are ready. If there is a need, we can be able to have enough for those. 
inadequate security and attacks on the police stations as I've indicated like with a number of police stations that have been excluded one of the criteria that was used is around the attacks of the of the police station where now we we're talking about the criteria on the minimum standards we also have a, 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 a national instruction on the access control we also enhanced security at the central storage facility we will continue conducting the assessment to be able to see and to alert the reactionary, um, responsible reactionary units should there be a need. We will also check on the issue of the communication for, I mean, communicate the operation, the operation hour so that we don't have a situation where more people are coming after hours to hand in their firearms because then it will create a risk for the police station. The attacks or theft or during the transportation, we also have a transportation plan that is developed that provide the escort on the bulk, uh, on, on the number, it will indicate how many people must be there, what type of forces are supposed to be there, so I won't go to detail because of security issues. Increase the number of applications of fi firearm licenses. As I've indicated, there might be people who are interested in applying for such firearms, they are allowed to do so. Then we will, uh, the, the decentralization of fingerprints has been finalized, then they can be able to do the decentralize it. I mean, take the fin fingerprints and finalize it there, and then we'll establish the task team to respond to the processing of the application. So in, in conclusion, we believe that the removal of illegal or excess firearm is indeed in the public interest of the, pop of the, of, of the community and is supported by the crime statistic which indicates that firearm is the instrument commonly used in the commission of crime, especially the violent crimes. Therefore, we feel that amnesty is actually a vehicle towards the reduction of serious crime and the involvement of all the people in the country will assist in making our country a safe country. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any other members who would like to add? Any further additions? No, we think, we think uh, thanks Chair. I think the, the presentation uh, is a true reflection of our views. We are comfortable with that. Uh, thank you, honorable members. I'll take hands and again, please members, I'll give you sufficient time. Um, I'll come back until we have exhausted all the questions. Um, I've noted Honorable Member Peacock, Faku, then I'll come down this row, and then please I'll come and end by the Chief Whip, give them opportunity to respond, and then we'll take another round of hands until we have exhausted all your questions. Could you please take down copious notes, respond to those questions, if the honourable members feel that their questions have not been responded to, I'll give them another opportunity to ask. Honourable members, my consideration is, and I'll, I'll, I'll um, give you my conclusion as well, is that there has not been an interdict against the minister at this stage. So, um, the legal team have left. You've seen that they've left. They have another uh, commitment. But we'll definitely ensure that um, all the legal prescripts have been adhered to. Um, we've requested that the legal team provide their opinion to us in writing as well. I'll give an opportunity to Andrew Honorable Peacock and then Honorable Farku. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine would be, let me take the opportunity to, to really applaud uh, SEPs for the presentation that they've given to us, taking into cognizance of the previous presentation that we felt as the committee that did not we did not say that the presentation was not correct but the information on the presentation could not give us many answers and to today 
and what I've listened to and what is on the presentation, I would really like to applaud uh, SEPs for the effort that they took and for listening to us as the committee, what do we expect to see from the presentation so that when we make our oversight uh, um, decisions should be informative decisions. And to me, I really would like to applaud that. And secondly, when you look um, previously on the on the states released the report that we got it was very scary as this committee we made a decision that SEPs should come with strategic means they must come with proactive attempts to assist us because at the ultimate end crime affects each and every one of us. You must sit down, come with strategic ways and means of how to see that we should see a reduction with, in terms of the stats that we got previously. And to me, what you are doing today and what you are presenting to us today is for us to take a decision to assist you because you are bringing this request to us to reduce crime and it's up to this committee to decide that do we really want crime to go up or do we really want to reduce crime and for me i would say i would really lobby and ask that some of the committee members would agree with us today that this amnesty should be approved and should be should be taken and should be should be considered as it is presented to us. But looking into the fact that with the crime stats that we have that was so high, this is what steps coming with this to us that we should look into it. And when you see at the, at the, the narrative report that you've given to us, when you look at the 2010 uh, uh, states and you see how it increased massively, you would ask yourself that, isn't it that the fact that the amnesty was only done by that time, that, that since then the crime has increased to this far? And today you are coming with a solution to us as this committee, that we should assist you to reduce crime. And to me, I feel that this is what we should do as this committee, to consider what you are saying with the background that you've given us. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Faku. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I think I want to follow what um, Honorable Peacock has alluded to. Number one, the presentation, I think, is very informative from our previous um, presentations that we have received. But also, Chair, before I go into the presentation, I think as members of this committee, we need to take into consideration the issue of illegal firearms that we have as a country. We know that after we have received the states from the minister, the states of crimes, we saw that many robberies that are happening, murder cases, uh, farm killings, and, and, many, and many things that are happening in our country, it's because of the issue of illegal firearms. And I think that the Firearm, Firearms Act, Control Act, subsection C and D clearly explain why do we have amnesty. So I think that covers me, covers me. Why should we have this uh, amnesty? And subsection uh, 30, uh, section 39, subsection 2 of the Firearms Controls Act also provides that such amnesty will only be, only be valid if it's approved by parliament. Here, yeah, I know that Mr. Hr Honorable Grunewald raised the issue of the time frames, but I was thinking, yeah, Chairperson, since the process has delayed, maybe we should, um, as committee, uh, approve maybe to say that it should start at least in November. The period should start in November, since now it's, it's late in October. But also, I'm also impressed with the project plan that they have presented to us but my interest will be in the steering committee that all members that will form of this form part of the steering committee that we must make sure that all these people are vetted because that is where we have problem 
And this steering committee needs to be at a high level. It needs to be at a high, 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 high level, this steering committee, because that is where the information will go out. So if we have a high level steering committee and we make sure that everyone who forms part of that steering committee is vetted, I think the, um, the project plan will go ahead. I just need a clarity on objectives. Um, number two, to provide firearms owners with an opportunity to hand in unwanted firearms. Maybe if that um, objective can please be explained to me. And I know, Chairperson, there was a lot of issues around litigations that was raised in our last committee meeting, but I think the presentation has responded to some of the questions that I had. Um, it's good to see that of course there's readiness in all provinces and there's exclusion of some police stations maybe um also yeah i need to understand why are some of these police stations um excluded in some provinces but chairperson overall i would also recommend that we make sure that as this committee we approve the amnesty by the period to start in 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 november thanks Jay. Thank, thank you very much. Honourable members, when you do your presentations, could we bear in mind that the select committee will only be sitting on the 30th? So um, when the, de the department and SAPs uh, respond, could you bear that in mind and um, suggest a solution to the dates or proposals for dates. There is no way in which uh, I believe we'll be ready by the 1st of November if there is any consideration by the committee. So um, when you do respond, could you also take that into account, please? Uh, Honorable Member Molekwa and then um, Honorable Member Moseke. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable <coughs> Chairperson. Let me also uh, congratulate uh, the department, uh, especially SAPS, on their presentation, which is very uh, comprehensive and informative. And, and I think it's in details uh, compared to the previous presentation that was presented by the committee. But I just want uh, clarity especially on the IBS, IBIS process. I uh, just want to know that if there is any mechanism uh, of monitoring in terms of uh, the IBS uh, uh, processes. And also, is there any security measures put in place, especially uh, as we know that we are dealing with very dangerous uh, objects. So it's very important that we have a very strict and tight security on the whole process. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Mofke. Thank you, Chairperson. And thanks for the presentation. I align myself with my colleagues. That is a prepared one, and uh, we can see that SAPS is ready for us. Chair, I just want to start where actually my colleague has left on the IBS, that uh, the contract has expired. And uh, now I can see that SAPS is preparing to be doing internally. Can they tell us how far are they? Because maybe will also be something that will maybe reduce the cost or if they, if they are going to appoint somebody else. But now on the issue of the designated amnesty officers, I want to know if you are ready and are, do, are you going to be, if you are ready, have you started with screening and vetting? because it's very important that we have people that have been vetted on this. And on the issue of the 450,000 uh, 450, actually guns that we know that uh, they are not uh, licensed, I want to know that uh, what will be the average lead for time for issuing uh, firearm licenses if it happens that uh, they are, the gun owners apply at the same time? Are you having that capacity of making sure that they are reissued? But on the same, again, I want to know that uh, uh, what will happen 
with the if if maybe maybe first let us allay the fears of people that actually their license have expired what is it that you have done to communicate so that they know that the process that SAPS is going to be taking is this one because remember some people are worried that we have licenses that have expired the communication thereof will be very important now the other thing is how will SAPS separate the amnesty firearm and firearm surrendered especially when you look at the hunting rifles and all that so that uh, people must be able to know as gun owners you have a clear communication with them on that regard because that will be the main thing that will be on that are you also i think this will be on deputy minister that uh, are you looking forward to have another summit that you had a summit before of firearms and all that so that we can educate people enough into the very same information and on those uh, uh, chair i think that uh, we are ready to be dealing with the department because we can see that now they are ready to be working on this matter i thank you thank you honorable member shimbeni thank you chair uh, thank you very much for the presentation i don't have much uh, i just quickly want to find out from the department if there's any funds that are being used for promotions or the materials to promote the public awareness uh, on the amnesty and then secondly we are talking about firearms so is the objectives is about the firearms or the firearms and ammunition because they might bring the firearms and keep the ammunition. So it must be the firearms and firearms and, um, and ammunition. Thirdly, on the types of firearms, uh, I've seen that we do have the successes, but we did not get what type of firearms have been handed in in the previous amnesty. Are these South African made firearms or we've got foreign firearms so as to concentrate on how these foreign firearms are coming into South Africa? And then the last one, the stations which are excluded in the different provinces. I think that once we must also know which stations are excluded so that people don't just go there and be told to go back. Are we going to announce that such and such station is excluded for amnesty or what? Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mafanya. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. The uh, and the leadership of SAPS, uh, honorable members. The mine are just a few questions that I'd like to put. The, is there a limit to a number of guns a person is entitled to have? Then the other, I expected actually to be briefed more on the previous amnesty deliberation that. Uh, Give us the that gave us the the momentum to come to a level where we have to be applying again uh, this amnesty, taking into consideration there were successes in and around 2010, I believe. So w we should have been taken into confidence to say these are the things, and then what attributes to people not to apply to let their uh, license expire. So we, we should be told because in the applications, even before you gave amnesty, there were reasons put forward why they applied for amnesty. The, the, the other thing is that, is there a reminder that you issue to gun owners to renew their licenses within the prescribed period? Uh, the, taking into account the number of uh, expired uh, guns close to almost Four hundred fifty thousand. It leaves much to be desired. 
then the last one might be is is actually the on the outlawed assault rifles that are in the hands of criminals that might have committed crimes uh, uh, what measures do we do to encourage such weapons to be removed from society because the reality they might have committed crime meaning that there is that fear factor on them that they cannot even begin to think of handing them over because they, they, they will definitely be arrested or whatever means that are there how best can we ensure that uh, we remove such uh, weapons to our society taking into consideration that they might not even think of applying for amnesty uh, i think that will be all for now thank you Thank you very much, Honorable Khulunavad. Thank you, Chair. Chair, firstly, I want to ask that the Honorable Members bear in mind the following. This is not the first time that uh, there's a request for amnesty when it comes to firearms. In fact, it's the third time. We had one in 2005 and one in 2010. What is the real aim of amnesty? The real aim is to get illegal firearms that can be used by committing a crime. Now, Chairperson, I said it previously. I've asked questions. You have the statistics here on uh, slide 8. You will see that for the majority of firearms that has been handed in in those two amnesty periods were legal firearms. And, and the general said, she emphasized, it's an opportunity for those people who have unwanted firearms to hand in. Now, firstly, Chairperson, if you're a legal firearm owner, you've got a legal firearm license for that firearm, you don't need amnesty to go and hand it in if you don't want the firearm anymore. You can take it any time to the police and say, listen, I've got this firearm, it's, it's legal, I'm the owner, I've got a legal license, but please, I don't want it anymore, destroy it. So you don't need amnesty to give an opportunity to legal firearm owners to get rid of their firearms, the unwanted firearms. That's misleading this committee, with great respect. Furthermore, in both those amnesty, because all firearms handed in, they have to be tested ballistically and to see whether it was involved in any crime. And the figure of those firearms, the illegal ones, handed in in the amnesty by the statistics of the police self were a zero. Not one single firearm that had been handed in in those two amnesty periods were used in any crime and it's logic a criminal will not go and hand in his firearm because even if you give amnesty and it is found that it was used the firearm has, was used in a, in a crime then you not receive amnesty not to be prosecuted then the law determines you still have to be prosecuted so we must be very clear in our minds when we talk about amnesty. And by the way, I supported those two periods. But we have a different situation today. Why? Because, Chairperson, this amnesty requested by the minister and the police now is not really about the fighting of crime and the illegal firearms. The aim is quite clear. It's about those firearms where the renewal of the firearms licenses lapsed. And that's why we had the litigation. And on that, Chairperson, I want to ask some questions. Firstly, the Honourable Minister referred and he said they don't want to use a backdoor on the court orders. Now, may I say to the Honourable um, Deputy Minister, 
And that's also my question to the police. If you look at the documentation given to us on the declaration of amnesty in terms of section 139 of the IF Arms Control Act by the police, on this specific case, it states in paragraph 2.6, it says, on the eve of tabling the draft notice before Parliament, the gun owners of South Africa brought legal action against SAPS, which in all probability would impact on the envisage amnesty. 2.7 Consequently, the Minister took a decision that the amnesty process be put on hold until all legal actions relating to firearms are finalized. The document here we have attached and marked as an H to B as reference. Well, this document I received doesn't have an H to B, so we didn't receive in all the documents. But it was the Minister who said it must be held until all legal actions relating to firearms finalized. Therefore, if you look for instance, there was a directive from the police. On 30 July 2018, the National Commission issued a directive upholding the interim court order of the gun owner South Africa. The subs directive further provides that persons who had already handed over their firearms because of the Constitutional Court judgment of June 2018 must be handed back their firearms if so requested by the owner. So, let's get clear. Yes, it's true. It does not interdict the minister to have a period of amnesty. But that was irrelevant. It was not part. And the Constitutional Court stated it's not a constitutional right to possess a firearm. That was a crunch of the Constitutional Court. That was a because if it was against the Constitutional Court, I can assure you that gun owner South Africans' application would have, wouldn't have been successful. It says clearly it must be handed back. Now we're coming forward and we say that there's no interdict on the minister as far as that is concerned. At this moment, it is said that they're still busy with the litigation. But if you look at the document of the police itself, the minister itself said it everything must put on hold until the legal actions relating to firearms are finalized. There is a court order that says that if you've taken firearms from people whose firearms licenses have been expired, you must hand them back. And that's why the minister said, hold, keep everything on hold. And that litigation is not finished yet. We're still waiting for the police. Nobody else. Subs must continue with their litigation as far as the gun owner South African court case is concerned. Now my question is firstly, why are we taking so long? If this is so urgent, why does the police take so long? And okay, the same document says then suddenly, notwithstanding what I said, during a meeting on 28 June 2019 that took place at Subs Academy, Tswane, the minister directed that the process to declare firearm amnesty be initiated as a matter of urgency. What is that urgency? The court order says, if my firearm has expired and I didn't apply within the time frame, you give it back to me. You're not allowed to have it. So it doesn't make sense. So, with great respect, Honorable Deputy Minister, this is using a backdoor. Because we know that people will think they can give back the fines. They're unsure what, what the situation is now. And I want to emphasize the fact to say that people, who, they have an opportunity to hand in their unwanted firearms. I want to emphasize this misleading this committee. You can go tomorrow, you can go this afternoon, if you don't want your firearm. And you can hand it in to the police. Please, get rid of it. Therefore, Chairperson, I also want to say the following. 
the documentation is not complete because if you look for instance on slide 12 you will see that there are 46 police stations that's right that are excluded from this project but if you look at the documentation given to us by the police with the annexure and that's the, uh, that's the notice which is the most important thing because the notice will be gazetted it says in paragraph A a written application for amnesty by an applicant must with the exception of the police station set out in the next year be handed to the duly appointed designated amnesty officer at any police station in the Republic of South Africa that the next year in other words the documentation we have that is going to be published in the Gazette only lists three names and the name of the nexus is KwaZulu Natal, Isipingo, Western Cape, Belleville South, Mpamalanga, Kanya Mazani. So the documentation from the police, the draft documentation and consideration report that's going to be gazetted only mentions three police stations. But with our presentation, we have 46. And we only see Eastern Cape 5 and all that. We want the names. And why is that so important to have the names there, person? Because of the fact that the police don't have control over firearms. With the BRRRs, we heard that they even issue firearms that's not even pin dotted or dot pinned and uh, ballistic tested. So there's a great concern in the public that as far as firearms concern, the way the police services handled them. And we're talking about 400,000 firearms here. 400,000, more or less. Now we as a committee will have to take a decision to say, oh, it doesn't matter. You go and hand in your firearm. Yes, we know the police has a track record of very poorly safety and handling of the firearms. And that brings me to my next question, Chairperson. If you look at uh, slide number 13, in slide number 13, as far as the training of people are concerned, the designated amnesty officials, it says details of 2,518 2, members were provided to Division Crime Intelligence for screening and vetting. So currently, it's today, 1,620 members are screened. 109 vetted and 789 are still in progress. At this moment, according to this documentation, there are only 109 people vetted. The screening is not vetting. The screening is just going through to see the details of the designated uh, amnesty officers, officials. Now, how on earth, and we're talking about time frames here of the 1st of November, or even 1 December, Jefferson, there is no way, and, and the Honourable Member is correct when she said it's very important to ensure that the people going to handle these firearms are properly vetted. Now my question to the police is, how are you going to ensure that at this moment you only got 109 vetted DF? I still want to know when we're going to get the, uh, the directive. We, we said we're going to receive it. At this stage I will concur um, to this. No, I, I think, could we just get an indication if all the documents have been made available to the members? Because um, I have, I have the, the declaration of the amnesty, the notice for consideration by Parliament. Could we ensure that all the members have those documents, please? You have them. That's what I refer to when I refer to two, uh, to A, the annexure. Uh, it's a draft notice for consideration by Parliament. Declaration of amnesty in terms of Ministry of Police. It starts with A, in referring to the stations that have been excluded. Uh, then you have another document, Chairperson. Included in that package is also the declaration of amnesty in terms of section 139 of the Violence on Control Act 
from the police services itself. There are many people who have signed this document. Yepta, Khan, Masimola. So I presume that the honorable members do have that document and in the end the Commissioner Sitole and the Minister signed that document. And I referring to that document specifically when I refer to 2.6, 2.7 where the Minister decided they must be held on until all litigation has been used. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, um, Honorable Tablach. Chairperson, thank you. Um, yeah, we had the presentation, but unlike some of the members, I'm not that much impressed. My concerns really, you know, is just, you know, came true. And I want to start by saying that the police is not nearly ready for this amnesty. And before I go to the specifics, Chairperson, I'm representing the Democratic Alliance and the Democratic Alliance supports everything that will bring crime in this country down. So therefore a proper amnesty process will be strongly supported by the Democratic Alliance. Chairperson, we were told at the previous engagement that this is a follow-up presentation where certain or more information will be given to us. Can I read from the very document that I have in front of me? A copy of the draft notice on amnesty was not made available to the committee. Now in the meantime, we got a copy, but I got three diff different versions of a copy of the amnesty. Um, and you know, as the Honorable Grunewald indicated, the one document indicates that it's applicable to all police stations. Now apparently the number of police stations included in this whole initiative is a moving target. Then you have all police stations, then you only, four is not anymore, it's taken out. Now we're sitting with 46. My question is, how many police stations are going to be included in this program? Apparently the police does not know themselves. Um, Chairperson, the second thing, we also requested that we need to get some indication of public participation. It's in this document. I haven't heard one thing about public participation and to what extent that was done. Chairperson, we, we, we requested to be updated on the status of the Firearms Control Amendment Bill. Once again, I didn't hear anything. And then lastly, Chairperson, it is note, uh, you know, noted here the confusion on the ongoing litigation on the renewal of firearms must be addressed before the declaration of firearm amnesty. The Honorable Grunewald has dealt quite extensively with that. Chairperson, but the confusion is even more now. I think that, you know, we need to be honest. Chairperson, let's, you know, if we're going to have an amnesty, and let's just for a moment or a minute now assume that all 400 or 450,000 so-called illegal firearm owners are going to hand in their firearms at police stations, it will obviously be regarded by the uninformed that it's a very, very successful amnesty that we had. It's not successful. The fact that we have so many illegal firearms in the possession of people in this country is the police's fault. Their inability to run a proper process. They haven't sorted them, uh, them uh, out themselves. To my, to my knowledge, and my question is to the Honorable Minister, what happened to the interim judgment? Have you appealed that, Minister? And if you have, what is the outcome? 
We know that there is no income uh, outcome uh, at the moment, and yet we are running now with a firearm amnesty process. The Honorable Grunewald mentioned that there was no, no, I, I, I repeat myself again, previous rounds, one illegal firearm or firearm so-called illegal connected to any crime committed. So we must be honest to the public and say we are taking firearms away from honest law-abiding citizens because of the police's inability to do their work. That is the factual position. And you know, we have we have a necessity in this country. Chairperson, South Africa is a very dangerous place. Now we are unarming innocent people because of their fear that they will be charged if they hand in their firearm. I don't think that is honest at all. We really need to ensure that we assist honest, honorable people of this country to be able to defend themselves. It's a very dangerous country that we're living in. Chairperson, let me go on. Um, Okay, I dealt with the, the police stations. Coming to, you know, we, we even touched on the crime stats and the expectation created is that the crime st stats will go down dramatically. I haven't seen that dramatic decline in crime stats the previous two rounds. So once again, are we honest here? Jefferson, then the security measures that needs to be taken or need to be taken at police stations. My question is, what is regarded as minimum requirements for safety? Because at the moment, at the moment, the police cannot even safeguard their own firearms. And now they are expecting people to hand in their firearms. They are interdicted not to do that because of the very reason. I touched on the crimes, uh, Chairperson. Um, chairperson, I, I already said that I don't think the police is ready for to, to go ahead. Honorable Grunewald already touched on people that need to be vetted, people need to be trained, you know, they are not sure where uh, exactly the firearms are going to be kept and safeguarded. You yourself indicated that you don't think they'll be able to start on the 1st of November. Chairperson, I think, and that is my plea, and that is my stance, I think that we need to send the police back. They need to go and apply their minds. They need to come up, they need to, they need to get their own house in order first. And only then, Chairperson, we can go ahead with a amnesty. You know, in the case where a person the firearm is so-called illegal. If that person hands in that firearm, he can simultaneously apply for a new license to be issued to him or her. Amnesty, that's a different story. Your firearm is gone. Chairperson, I can't support that. Thank you. Honorable members, this time I would like you to um ensure that I am not misrepresented. I do not want to be misrepresented. The last time uh, we dealt with this, uh, there uh, was a complete misinterpretation of what I said. I did not doubt the capacity of the police in terms of their preparedness to implement. I simply stated the fact that the select committee would only be sitting on the 30th and it would then have to go from the select committee to the National Assembly. This would make the date of the 1st of November practically impossible. I at no stage doubted or questioned the capacity of the police. Could that be understood, categorically understood please? I'll now take um, Honorable Member Mapatsu. Thank, thank, thank you, Chair. 
I don't think it will be advisable as a committee to take a decision that we send the police back for another day. Today's uh, presentation to me is much clearer and I can interpret it outside in my constituency work. Now, we are dealing here with illegal firearms, which to me is non-negotiable. If you have an illegal firearm, and I was saying, uh, you see, if you have an illegal firearm, whether it was for the right or wrong thing, the fact remains it's illegal. You are saying we are living in a highly uh, crime inflated uh, 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 country. Now, the amnesty is trying to say in order to reduce crime, there are many illegal weapons that are in the hands of other people. And uh, the, the, the police are saying, we need to reduce uh, that. And now they are saying that there must be an amnesty. But if I bought an illegal firearm, and it goes through the forensic and it's found that it has killed 10 people, you'll suffer the consequences of buying an illegal uh, gun. That is understood, and I don't think we should, uh, we, we disagree. I think all of us, we agree, and we must encourage uh, that, that people must hand over illegal uh, firearms. I was even going to propose that maybe we must have initiatives you know, to be flexible, to say, okay, I bought this firearm because the township that I reside at, it's crime, you know, related. So people, they buy these guns just to save themselves, not to do criminal activities. So if we say an amnesty, I'm just saying for communication purposes, for the flexibility of the police, to say, put it in, in, an, in an envelope, just like we do with the public protector, and say, anonymous envelope, you know. Uh, you just go to the police station. I'm just giving an example. I'm not saying that. Yes, it's illegal. But you, you, you just said, uh, on Honorable Hunefald, people will not hand over their, their weapons. So we are saying in order for them to hand them over, we must be also be flexible to come with initiatives as leadership. To say at least he's going to hand that firearm to the police station or next to the gate of the police station where the police will see it in an envelope. And they will call him off the area to say there's a bomb there. Only to find that it's a, it's a weapon and when they trace, it might have killed many people, but we have now on the line of saying we are reducing a crime. We want to get these illegal weapons. I think that one, all of us, we we agree. The, the the second one is, I think it's the clarity on the licensed uh, firearms. I think the four hundred and fifty thousand. My understanding is the licensed firearms whose uh, licenses have expired it's not that these are uh, illegal if, if, if i'm subject to correction but the way i read it and i understood is that this is four hundred and fifty thousand firearms that are licensed 
but the licenses have expired. Now, the, the, the question that I would want to, to ask is that if this 450,000 or 400,000 people, they come and hand over uh, their weapons, first, it's safety. <coughs> Secondly, is that not to disadvantage people who bought their firearms. Is it subs ready, especially the licensing uh, department, to make sure that uh, they don't take too much uh, a long time before they issue, reissue a new license? Isn't it that a person must go for competency test and all those things? And those are the things that I would like uh, the subs just to explain, to say, in order not to delay our people, to say, we will make very fast that you get your license back. The, the legal issue, uh, I think they, they will have to, to explain because it was one of the things that's really confusing me also. Uh, because the Constitutional Court uh, pronounced in favor of subs, but there was an, an interdict by the High Court or the relief by, by the High Court. And it says that the subs be interdicted from receiving firearms for which licenses have expired. So I, I, I now understand that uh, the gun owners of South Africa, they are interdicting people whose licenses have expired, that they cannot be repossessed. That's my understanding, that they cannot be uh, repossessed. They are... Uh, uh, illegal. If they are illegal and there is an interdict, I think uh, we should be able to really deal with the subs to deal with this matter agently of the 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 interdict. How long? Uh, is it going to take? When is it coming uh, back? Because you see, with the illegal firearms, I'm I'm fine. But with this uh, interdict still uh, here, and uh, we we want to 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 proceed with the 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 firearms am amnesty. It's really going to confuse uh, us. I know maybe you might win it because the Constitutional Court has ruled in favor. I'm not saying you, you can do that, but the Constitutional Court. But I agree that as we do this thing, we must close all the the loopholes, the the loopholes, as we we act as the, the the Department of Police together with the 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 department. My, my colleagues have raised the IBIS, but if I listen properly, they said the forensic, IBIS is a forensic, is it called? Yeah? Testing and what, 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 yes. They spoke about seven days. It will take seven days, and then 30 days they will get the the report whether the web the, the, the firearm was used uh, illegally or not but it doesn't uh, say if I have got a firearm I have killed another person secretly and it is known it is unknown who killed that person I think I should be subjected to to that.
that my, my firearm must be tested whether it was not involved in criminal activities. It should go uh, undergo that uh, uh, processes. I agree with uh, Honorable Grunewald that as, as we wait for these things, I don't think it should stop the minister from saying, let's proceed with this illegal uh, firearms. People should get, should, should bring back the illegal uh, uh, firearms because we want to get rid of these illegal firearms because they are the ones that are committing uh, crime. So if we still delay because of other things, those who are fighting for legal, uh, for the licensed firearms, I think the police uh, will find a way of how to put it. But you can't stop saying surrender illegal weapons. We'll be failing uh, on our duty to say we want to reduce crime. But we sit here as members of parliament and say, no, technically, we can't hand over the, 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 the weapons. Those that are illegal, I see here even the presentation, it's highlighted red. That means it's dangerous to have an illegal uh, firearm. We must get rid of it. I don't, and I don't understand me, why do we give an amnesty for a person with an illegal firearm? Amnesty for what? You bought this thing illegal and you you know that this thing was taken from somebody and it might have committed many uh, uh, criminal activities it might have killed my sister so i, I don't think uh, the illegal ones we should really uh, take cover with the uh, uh, the expired licenses the expired licenses there is an interdict is, what is the, is the relief which they will explain at uh, the police. Uh, Chair, the, the issue that I want to raise is the destruction part of it. Honorable Mapatu. Is the last one. Could you do your last one? Yes. I can see that there are other chairpersons. No, we, we have more hands. And yes. I told all the members that we are very patient today yeah. to give the SAPs an opportunity to respond because there are many questions that have been asked. Yes, unfortunately I was the last. No, you so, will be the first in the next round. Sorry, Honorable Yes, Robert. but others were given enough time. No, you still have enough to time. To present. I'm saying I'll come so, back to you again. You'll have enough time. I'm, I'm coming to, to, the, to the last one, Chair, that I also uh, want to request you, Chair, that maybe we get a presentation on the Firearms Control Act uh, so that you are clear. And what is this all opposition about it? it maybe we should get a presentation on, 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 on it. If the, the previous members of Parliament did receive it, we are new, we don't know about it. We need to get informed about it because some of the things, they are, they are linked to this thing. So on the destruction part of it, what does SAPS get from that destruction of the, the firearms? Uh, I happen to serve in the committee of what is called the NACCC ne? or the NCCC, National Arms NCACC, the National Control National uh -huh. Arms, Arms Control Con committee. committee. That's it. You see? So where there is destruction, you know, you can see. Uh, where they started up to the to the end and there's no way that you can miss it but i just wanted to to know what does uh subs get
from that. Now, I know that uh, PFMA things and something like that. Whilst I was saving there, uh, my, my, my honorable member, my honorable, my father, my father, my father, is my friend. Honorable member Mafanya is that in the NC, NCACC there was a proposal that why don't we give military veterans an opportunity to get involved in the destruction because they are Honourable Member Mapa. Uh, yeah, point of order. I, I understand my good colleague here, but I think we're going too far now. Uh, this is portfolio committee of police. I understand the destruction is something else. I, let, I, I would request that we deal with this matter, focusing on that specifically. Am I out of order? <laughs> Honourable Member Mapa, we 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 have deleted your last statement. It okay. has been removed from the record. You may continue. Yes, uh, Chair. It's fine. Uh, let it, it be deleted, you see. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm asking, uh, what does SAPS get from that destruction? You know? Because it's a company that is destroying that thing the ammunition and arms. I'm just asking, what does SAPS get uh, from that? You know? Okay, the, the last one... That is, that is allowed? Yeah, that is allowed. The last year, I, I wanted to say, I don't think we have got 46 police stations in South Africa. We have got more than uh, 46 uh, police station. My understanding on this presentation 1,145 police station. If I understand correctly the, the presentation 1,152 police stations. So out of 1,152 police stations it's only 46 police stations that are not ready. If I understand the presentation correctly, it's only 46 uh, police stations in these nine provinces that are not ready. So with 1,000, we humanize 46, and then you have the rest of this, the police, police stations. That means we have many police stations that can take care of your 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 four hundred uh, uh, thousand. Thank you, Chair. The last is the summit that I pr I want to second uh, Honourable Jackie uh, about the summit. Thank you. The um the list of questions is very long. I'm going to give Saps an opportunity, and then I'll come back to all the members. There's only one member who hasn't had an opportunity yet. Um, Honorable Member Patrain, are you happy? We could continue. Honorable Deputy Minister, the Chairperson, floor is yours. Uh, Chairperson, uh, I really want us to, before we give the Deputy Minister, a clarity so that we can be having the real information. I had Member Swart, Honorable Swart, saying that uh, uh, the two amnesty that is 2005 and 2010 and we look at that period we didn't Honorable have Honorable Swan, uh, which uh, one is Swan? I'm Swart. Oh no, sorry. No. Uh, uh, on uh, Ter Blanche, I'm sorry. Oh, why I say Swart? Honor, uh, Honorable Ter, Ter Blanche saying that uh, in 2005 and 2010 the crime didn't go down. And if you can look at the presentations that actually were presented, even in the annual report, crime went down. And 
if you look also on the graph that was given today and you look at the amnesty the illegal one and also on the amnesty of those that are legal and you look at the difference between them it tells a story i disagree with him and i don't think that is a right question for the department because the information was given we even said we know who was the general who was the minister at the time and that is let us have facts right and uh, the other questions will follow but it was also on the question of those uh, 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 police stations the list can be provided because we need the list that is actually consolidated with reasons of why not these police stations that are not given actually the space and you might find that it's in the hot spot or where things are happening they will terrify that but also on the very same one that are surrendered or the ones that are illegal if they find that there are some of them were listed under those that were missing during mr prince law who's in jail a former police officer are they going to open another case or recharge him that is another one thank you honorable members you are really testing now please i have made a ruling to say can we give saps an opportunity you will have honorable khurnava really no i've given you enough opportunities now honorable khurnava you will never behave in this fashion it's a short very short opportunity yeah, thank you chair and I, i don't want that there be must be misconceptions it is true the crime did go down especially if you look at 2011 so but it was not because of the amnesty the most can i say the major reason for that was a 2010 world cup and there were more visible policing so let's just get the facts correct there uh, honorable khurnawa chair oh uh, no 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 uh, can we give saps an opportunity to respond honorable khurnawa you are not saps so don't respond to honorable members could saps please minister deputy minister please take your opportunity because uh, honorable members I'm not going to call you to order but you are seriously out of order now Deputy Minister I apologize for this No no it's okay chair uh, it's okay but uh, we, well we thank thanks for the questions uh, chair and uh, members we 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 listened and we had the concerns that members have raised uh, some of them for instance saying that uh, why give a person amnesty for possession of illegal firearm uh, precisely because that thing is illegal we want to encourage them to to bring them on board uh, honorable honorable mapat So, so 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 that we, they know they can bring their firearms they they won't be prosecuted but if that firearm was involved in an in an act it committed uh, was used in in a in a criminal activity or it was in during a it, you have shot somebody and uh, the ballistics prove that you will be prosecuted for that um but by i don't think i must explain further than than that uh, uh amnesty is, is it's generally used to assist to enable an environment for you to do certain things which under normal circumstances can be done and it's, it's something that has, is done the world over uh, in our country we just spoke of the 2005 2010 when we presented here we we, we never said that uh, there will there will be no crime once this amnesty is done we have never said that but in our fight against crime uh, we believe we must retrieve as many weapons as possible from 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 the streets or from uh, our people and go and destroy them if if we can find ourselves in a situation where there are no guns and people live freely without fear that will be the ideal uh, situation but the reality is that we live in this environment and uh, from time to time we will adopt tactics that will help us to deal with what is a challenge 
guns are a problem uh, and and hence they need to control and hence they need to take from the street guns that are not uh, are, are illegal uh, of course we 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 not only wait for for amnesties to confiscate illegal fi illegal uh, firearms from time to time we do raids and we do come across illegal firearms and we confiscate them and in such instances the amnesty does not apply uh, I, I i don't get the sense chair that uh, members are opposed to the amnesty i don't get that sense uh, there are issues that they are raising some of them are you know, you know, some you must use a language that is not uh, you are not seen to be condescending to what members are saying. For instance, there's an issue about 450 firearms. For yeah, 450,000 firearms, and that this amnesty is intended to do that, and it's not correct. The, the amnesty has got nothing to do with the 450 uh, 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 firearms. The impression is created that uh, once this amnesty is passed, we are going to go for those individuals whose licenses have expired in terms of the act, which is not the case. And we have explained here in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the in the beginning why uh, uh, the amnesty. It's not targeted to the 450. What we have said is that those people who have got, uh, who fall within this category, if they so wish, they want to turn in their weapons, uh, they, they will have the right to do so. Like it norm it's normally the case. There will be others who will uh, and in their, li their licensed firearms during this period. Uh, you have seen that the, the diagram there, it shows in 2005, so many people submitted their arms which were legal. And in 2010, the same thing. And the majority of the firearms that were submitted there are those that were legal firearms. Well, I can't preempt uh, what will be the situation like with this amnesty because I can't prophesy who is going to turn in their, arm, their arms. It's possible if we were to look at the 2005 and the 2010 uh, registry, legal arms were more than the illegal uh, firearms. You can then deduce that probably you will have the same outcome, but it's not given that it will be, it will be like that. So. I don't think that 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 is an opposition to to the to the amnesty. That's why I'm saying, Chair, listening to all members when they made their contribution here, I don't get the sense that members are having a problem with the amnesty. They support it. I think the only member who who explicitly said that uh, is not supporting the amnesty is a. Uh, Honorable Tara Blanche, uh, but even the issues that is is raising there, uh, you know, does not necessarily mean that at all cost he he opposes it. No, and of course he says that uh, he will support anything that will help to create an environment where uh, the level of crime declines. If, if by doing this criminality will decline, you will support it, you know, which is a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good posture. The, the other issues that members have raised, uh, we, we, we agree with, we'll take on board. Uh, yeah, I, that's why I say mainly members are not really uh, opposed to, 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 to the amnesty and I think we should support the processes of amnesty and raise the issues that they think subs must deal with. Like for instance, I think it's Honorable Grunewald who wants surety that yes indeed 
uh, we are we are not going to gun for the 450 the, the 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 request for the amnesty is not for that and i think the process to deal with this 450 is a separate process which must be allowed to unfold and that's its conclusion will the country will know what will happen because if for instance we agree that uh, from uh, the 1st of december the 1st of january amnesty starts if it starts on uh, on january it means it will end in june it doesn't mean by june we will have resolved the problem of the 400 you might find that you might still be in court but if it is resolved by that time it will have been resolved and uh, I don't think it should be a problem, really. Uh, I'm, I must allow um, uh, the members of the team to talk to specific uh, questions that have been raised, which I did not, uh, I did not talk to. With your permission, Chair, uh, I will allow uh, the acting national commissioner to start, and then uh, the, the rest will come in, uh, will follow her up. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members. Uh, sorry, um, when when you do respond, I'm, I just need to understand, did we have two amnesties or did we have three amnesties prior to this? It's, it's just a, a technical matter because I remember there was one in 1994 95 2005 2005 and, and 2010 all right yes. so you didn't have the first amnesty to mark south africa's transition to democracy oh that's very interesting there was a moment when we, we, we were called upon to, to hand in uh, uh, weapons uh, uh, it, it happened. Uh, it's just that uh, it was an amnesty because people know if you hand in, nothing is going to happen to you. And if you don't hand in and they go and get your arms catch, you will, you will, uh, you will be prosecuted. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I want to assure Honorable Members in terms of their state of readiness. We agree that uh, there were previous instances where there were challenges and we even cited the Prince Law case. We indicated that there were previously attacks at police stations. In drawing up the project plan, which also makes visible the risks and the mitigation thereof. We took into consideration our experiences. Hence, we believe with the plan that we are having, we will be in a position to manage the process of amnesty. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, communication to the public, our position is that uh, we will begin to communicate. We do have a plan in place as part of the project plan. We can only communicate and give direction to communities once uh, we received approval at this level. Uh, the IBIS, the, 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 there were challenges in terms of the IBS, hence the contract has not been in place. We are at a very advanced stage of resolving the IBIS challenges uh, as, 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 as the organization. The contract will be in place, the system will be in place again. And then in terms of training, it is on the job training, the training take, takes five days. However, we do have members who have been, uh, 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 whose job description is linked to the IBIS testing. We do have members that are assigned the job already. Uh, in terms of the, 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 the police stations uh, which have been ex excluded, we indicated in the presentation that uh, this was based on risk assessment. Uh, 
Our presentation is comprehensive. However, we did not talk to the integrities as, as we implement at the lower levels. We do have that detailed information, even including the names of the police stations we, we, we do have. If we have to present the names here, we will be in a position. Each province uh, uh, was requested after the, they've conducted the, the risk assessment to indicate those police stations. So we do have uh, the names of the police stations. Um, Honorable Chair, uh, we believe there is no confusion on the firearm litigation um, which uh, we have been requested to clear our legal uh, services will talk to our interpretation and understanding and also the issue of the interim judgment we took into consideration the interim judgment in in, in drawing up uh, 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 the plan we will be able to 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 talk to talk to that we believe the availability of uh, unlawful unwanted or illegal firearms within uh, the communities uh, poses a threat to, 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 to the communities and it makes it difficult for us to do policing. And this process is one of the opportunities which will assist us towards ensuring that uh, we are able to, to an extent, have a reduction in uh, 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 of, the violent, of the violent crimes because most of the crimes, as earlier indicated by my colleagues, were committed people uh, uh, utilizing uh, firearms. I will hand over to uh, Lieutenant General Jafta and Major General uh, Mamuteti to talk to the uh, uh, technical questions that are uh, pertaining to the environment. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister, Honorable um, Chairperson, and Honorable Members. Good morning once more. Um, I will just add on to the other questions in terms of the steering committee that has been established to monitor the implementation the steering committee will be headed by the deputy national commissioner of policing which is the chairperson of the national crime combating forum uh, which is also attended by by the operational um the other operational deputies um, um divisional commissioners and deputy provincial commissioners for policing they are all vetted so that one has been dealt with. In terms of um, just looking at the, the stations which the Honorable Grunewald has referred to, the, the National Crime Combating Forum is, is chaired by the Nas Deputy National Commissioner for Policing. And then all the divisional commissioners and Deputy Provincial Commissioners attending that forum are vetted. Okay. Then just in terms of the, sec so the, the three stations versus the 46 stations, you remember that you had various questions at the last meeting. I think what we've gone back is to up the game uh, following the questions and direction that we've got from this committee. We have included um, criteria because the, the first criteria was looking at the tech on police stations and where uh, firearms were stolen. We've upped the game in terms of that, specifically after the last meeting and direction given. We also look at the standards for safe storage and also where firearms were stolen out of SAP 13. That's why the increase in the stations. But we are able to give you that list as the, de as the Deputy National Commissioner has indicated to you. Then in terms of um, the, let me just see, the amnesty and, and firearms, are we able to say what is voluntary surrendered and, and what is what are illegal firearms? We have portrayed it there. Uh, in our presentation, we'll be able to do that also at the debriefing. There are others that we will definitely look at that is not included in our current presentation, but the weather debriefing will include it as directed and by the question directed. The firearm and ammunition, we will be able to also in, include the ammunition that has been uh, uh, handed in and we will also be able to give you the type of foreign firearms um, in our debriefing uh, when we finish with the, with the amnesty. It's not in the current uh, uh, presentation. Then in terms of, um, 
I think I think I, I got the idea from the from from the committee that they did not really attend the issue of anonymous uh, drop-offs of uh, firearms. That is definitely not in. We cannot have that process. It's not part of the act either. And then in terms of what what is South African police service getting out of destruction, out of the destruction, what we're getting out of that is that we are mitigating most of our risk, chairperson. Uh, that is within our within our uh, police stations itself, with regards to stockpiling, and those we are not getting money out of it. And I must say that the service provider that provides us the service does it for free. There is no cost to it as well, and as the only service provider countrywide so what that is willing to, to assist. Sorry, then what happens to the metal? The metal goes with other metal. Within the within the system, uh, currently, uh, chairperson, it's melted with other metal. That is that is what's happened to it. So I'm going to leave the the other technical questions in terms of the turnover times and the dealing of um, the licensing part to General Mamotete to to respond to. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, the issue of of the vetting of the DFOs, uh, as the Honourable as Honourable Khunewald has indicated, that the number of the people that have been vetted, the vetting processes we must confirm that is taking a, 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 a very s a long process. And with this process, that's why we already we also have the screening process that we have included. Then the two they run parallel, but for the purpose of us to be able to move in terms of the screen of of having those people being cleared, we are encouraging that we must finalize the process of screening, of which we got a confirmation from crime intelligence. It will be done. The figures that is outstanding at the end of the f of this month, but however the waiting part uh, or the waiting part will take long because it's actually a long process. Uh, on the number of guns that a person has, must have is in terms of the Firearms Control Act. If you read chapter, I think it's chapter 6, it will say in terms of the different section for self-defense how many a person must have, for spot shooting how many a person must have. So it's outlined clearly in terms of the Firearms Control Act. The reminders for the expired license um, this is actually what was coming from the uh, Constitutional Court in terms of saying it is not the responsibility of the police to remind the gun owners on the date at which on which their firearm licenses are expiring. If we do it, it's not like we are obliged in terms of any of the provision of the Act. We are not sending the, 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 the reminders because we are normally reliant on the SMSs and the bundles have become very expensive in that environment. But also take into, to, to, taking into consideration that if you have a firearm, it's still the responsibility of the owner because when you are given a firearm, it will indicate the validity that it will take five years, it will take how many years, so after that years, before the expiry, then you must ensure that the firearm license has expired. So I can just indicate that we, we don't have that. But however, we have, been, we have been trying to communicate with the awareness campaigns. During the awareness campaigns, we even have drafted some um, posters and um, hand materials that we are giving to the community that if they have a firearm license, it's still the, their responsibility to check their date of expiry so that they can be able to renew their licenses. The, the renewal part of it, the renewal part of it in terms of the, our, our APP, we're saying we finalize the application within 90 days. We stick to 90 days. The same process that is applying when the person is applying for a firearm license when he's not in, which is not including the amnesty will still be applicable. The person must still have a competency, must still complete the 271s, must still have fingerprint taken and all these processes. So we are still focusing on that number of the days that we have committed to the 90 days. But however, for the purpose of us not being able to mix all these processes, we will be having a task team that will be dealing with that one. Uh, must the public have a competency for renewal? Yes. If the firearm license has expired, automatically is illegal in terms of the Constitution and the Act. 
therefore you start afresh in terms of the competency unless if the competency is still valid then you can just submit the, the competency and we move on uh, in terms of the reminders i think i've spoken to that one um, what else did i miss or oh, the distraction you spoke about it yeah i think i've covered some the litigations will be dealt with by legal Honorable Chair, I'll request Colonel Clute to talk to the legal issues. Chair, thank you. Uh, I just can mention that there shouldn't be any uh, confusion regarding the litigation. The only case that is really causing the confusion is the Gun Owners Association versus the National Commissioner and the Minister of Police case. That case is currently uh, under appeal in the Supreme Court of Appeal. The heads of arguments on behalf of the police was filed last week. The Gun Owners Association is supposed to file the heads of arguments on the 16th of November and then we'll wait for a directive regarding a date. What it needs to be clarified is that if we look at the interdict that was granted, it refers that the police is interdicted from accepting and requesting people to hand in firearms for the sole reason that the license for which the firearm was uh, granted has expired. So uh, it remains to the firearms that where the license has expired. It has no bearing on any other unlawfully possessed firearm or there's nothing in this judgment that prevents the minister from implementing and complying uh, requesting uh, a section 139 amnesty uh, with regards to that position the honorable member Grunewald referred to the letter of the national commissioner uh, which was issued subsequent uh, to that judgment that letter is still valid and in place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, I think there's one question I've omitted, and that was a question with regard to the budget. Budget for the amnesty, I can confirm there's a dedicated budget for the amnesty. Uh, th th thank you, Hon Honorable Chair. Uh, I, I just want to go back to the to, to the to the screening. The the screening is done by uh, our our intelligence. Um, the vetting, as indicated by uh, General Mamuteti, it's a continuing process to ensure that uh, we do not have uh, members that are vulnerable within the Central Firearm Register based on the uh, on, on on the experience. But then we are satisfied that through the screening process, members who will be involved in the amnesty are the right people. Thanks. DM. Thanks, Chair. I think uh, yeah, that, that should suffice for, for our response. Yeah. But thanks for the opportunity. For now, honorable members, before we break, and then I'll come back and ask for another round. I'm going to do a midterm summary, a halfway summary. And then I would like honorable members to indicate if we're moving in that direction or if we have serious concerns thereafter. We are all in agreement that we would like to reduce violent crime. There's no dispute about that. The committee supports the ministers and the president's call to address violent crime and to eradicate violent crime. No dispute on that. We are also in agreement that firearm amnesties have been used and they have been used in the country and they are used worldwide to reduce the circulation of illegal firearms. 
we get to the conditions of the amnesty. And the members are saying that those conditions are the key to success. I need you to uh, indicate your conditions of what you're concerned about. This is not a no questions asked amnesty. It's a, not a blanket approval. So the conditions of the proposed amnesty is that there will be indemnity Um, but that this indemnity does not apply for those firearms which were used to commit a crime. The Firearms Control Act would need to be explained in the next session or a session. The Central Firearms Registry was established to process and monitor firearm ownership through applications and renewal. Do I have an understanding that you are concerned about the challenges with this registry? That there are challenges. And that in the previous committee meeting you mentioned and you raised these concerns. You also raised concerns about the information technology system of the Central Firearms Registry. So as I said, honorable members, that the department and SAPS came with a turnaround strategy. We have been presented with SAP's turnaround strategy. Now, our responses, and I spoke about the conditions, are to be met through the SAP's turnaround strategy. So, the turnaround strategy we've adopted in this committee to address the service delivery challenges. If you disagree with me, please, you will have an opportunity to do so. So, we have allegations of fraud and corruption within the system and that those allegations will be dealt with through the turnaround strategy. I further would like to insist that the IBIS, the Integrated Ballistic Identification System, will be concluded. The committee members are unhappy that the system is not in place, and they, but there is a commitment from SAPS sorry, that the contract would be speedily concluded. So, the program will be rolled out through the Forensic Science Laboratory. Um, SAPS, please correct me if this is not what you are saying. And that crime intelligence will be responsible for screening and vetting Whereas the committee said that this process has to be fast-tracked. You are confident that you have the capacity to fast-track the vetting and the screening. This is a concern which was raised by the committee. So I get back to our objectives. The first objective is to reduce the number of illegally possessed firearms in circulation. We're in agreement, we want to reduce the number of firearms 
which are in illegal possession in the country, for illegal circulation in the country. Yeah, I have my reservations on, on that, that one. one. Yeah. All right. So we'll come back to that one. Then we want to provide firearm owners with the opportunity to hand in unwanted firearms. Not in agreement. All right. I also, my reservations on that one, you want, you're going to come back. Because no, we're coming yeah, back. Right. So I'm trying to, if we're in disagreement, I'm coming back to it. I just want to direct the um, the submissions going forward. This first round, I've given you an opportunity to really express your general concerns. So I want you to focus on that which we are not in agreement with. Then, you want to address, um, you want to further address the matter of licensing. The licensing of those who do, who did have legal firearms, but whose licenses have expired. So for us to renew those licenses, you're saying that you need a competency test. Is that correct? No, Jay, if, if, you, if you renew your license, it depends. If you had, for instance, a firearm only for self-defense, the competency certificate is also normally for five years. But if you have, for instance, a firearm for self-defense, but you also have a hunting rifle, for instance, the competency certificate is normally for, I think, 20 years. Uh, so, at, uh, 10 years, sorry, that's correct, at 10 years, but that mean if you already have a competency, you don't have to renew the competency again with the ren of, of your application of the renewal of the firearm. We could include this, that uh, SAPS has um, assured us that you would have the capacity to do these competency tests. They don't Sorry, do it. They don't do it. I, I, I mean, uh, if you look at the process, uh, the competency is with an accredited so provider, service provider or anything like that. But the competency don't, uh, is not done by the police services. Then I'm satisfied. Are we all satisfied on that? Good. I have less concerns now. We get to the legal part. Please listen to my summary because I'm not a legal practitioner. The interim court order does not prohibit the proposed firearm amnesty. So the vacuum of expired licenses that that creates your concern now regarded as illegal also so they now call regarded yes they are now regarded as illegal and so that is also your concern i, I think also chairperson they must be taken note that has just been said <laughs> but the, the 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 gun owner south africa also interdicted the police to give back those firearms. That's, that's a very important issue there. Chairperson. I'm, I'm coming to the areas where we are, um, where we are, have concerns. There, I now have three areas that we have to discuss. So when we return, I'll give the SAPs an opportunity and the DM to DM. We are saying, do the, uh, well, there is an act, yes, but we are saying that those who, whose uh, license have expired, they have got illegal arms, but you can't arrest them, so you can't say they are illegal. Those, those who don't, whose license have expired and they have not renewed, as things stand, you can't go and arrest them. It will, you can't do that. Yes, so technically they are legal. So what is your concern? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move towards yes, yes, answering but, questions. Yes, but I'm not saying we must not attend to that problem ultimately. 
we must attend to it, but we must not conflate it with the amnesty. The amnesty is a separate process altogether. This situation of the 450 uh, uh, individuals or arms must be attended to, because as a country we can't live with an environment like that. So it means from the side of the department and the affected people, they must be able to say to make our fernadering, they are to nadering. That's what must happen. So, because Jeff, do you want me to respond now or after the break? I, I'm giving you a break for the to nader. To nadering is you must have your break and coffee. I don't have anything stronger than coffee. You must have tea and uh, you should discuss this and find some common ground. Could you find some common ground we are breaking? We have reduced it now to three areas of concern. Deputy Minister um, and uh, Generals, uh, I think we have, we, we do have the goodwill, we have the intention to address those concerns and to find common ground. I would allow you to, to have a tea break um, we'll reconvene within a half an hour's time. Half an hour? There's no lunch, please get your own lunch. There's cost containment measures. No, there's a two nadir. It's a half an hour for... Uh, you may talk now um, if you have any concerns. Can I ask for 15 minutes? Yeah, it's enough. Would that be enough? Yeah. Yes. 15 minutes, agreed? <laughs>
if you are still unhappy, I'll come back to the members. Reducing the number of illegally possessed firearms in circulation in South Africa. Honorable members, we are not saying eradicating. We are saying reducing. So there will be a reduction. There will not, we are, are very clear that there will be a reduction in the number of illegally possessed firearms. It will not lead to the complete eradication of firearms in society. We, we hope to reach that stage one day, but it is not going to address the complete cleaning up of firearms in society. We are not that ambitious or um, idealistic. The reality is that there will still be firearms in circulation, but we will reduce the number of firearms in circulation. Honorable Khurnavalt, you're still unhappy. I disagree, Chairperson. It sounds like gun-free South Africa's pipe dreams, but uh, I, I disagree with that one. With okay. great respect. You disagree that there will be a reduction? Of course, well, of course there's going to be a reduction. Yes. But, but I mean, uh, the eradication is not even on the table. No, that's <coughs> what I'm saying. That is not our ambition. So we're talking the same language, isn't it, Biki Engels? On stem sam, that ons gaan net vir minder. Dat sal net vir minder. Dat sal nie totaal verdwee nie. Ons gaan net nie totaal aanspreek nie. My Engels is dan nie so swak, die voorzitter. <laughs> my Afrikaans is swak. My Afrikaans is non-existent. I do speak Afrikaans a little bit, but are we now in agreement? Yes. The two nadering has worked. Um, we are in agreement that firearm owners will have the opportunity to end in their unwanted firearms. Agreement. No, the person with great respect. Why do you want to state that? No, you were in disagreement. No, no, no. What if I? If we don't need to state it, I'm repeating it because earlier you were in disagreement. So two nadering has worked. No. He was saying uh, you you don't need an amnesty to to hand over uh, uh, your licensed firearm. Uh, but we, we are just saying in this context, even those who have got legal firearms, they will get the opportunity to hand over what they don't want. We are agreement now. There is not the amnesty that is required. You may hand in... Uh, 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 Honorable Khurnaval, complete. You need a amnesty for this. We are in agreement. Yes, you do not need an amnesty for a legal firearm. We're getting closer to agreement. DM, you in agreement? Okay, then we are concerned about the licenses. The renewal of the licenses. Separate process? This is a separate process. Groenewa? Sure, it's a, it's a separate process, Jefferson, but again, if I may use the words of the Honorable Deputy Minister of Context, that's that's part of the problem, if, if I may, because you're asking it now. And, and I disagree with great respect uh, with the Deputy Minister to say it's not about those firearms whose licenses has been expired. And if you allow me, Jefferson, I will prove it to you by reading to you a directive from the police services. A directive of the police services issued in Northwest. 
het is de implementation plan preparation for amnesty instructions relating to the processing and receive of firearms of, of, of the firearms let me let me read it to you that, that you can see what I mean by that it says the following cluster and station commanders are instructed to immediately set up cluster flash teams led by the senior DFO designated firearms officers at an accounting station it says then the team of DFOs must immediately compile an audit of the individuals or persons in each policing precinct who were previously licensed to possess firearms and who are now in illegal possession due to the non-renewal of the license. Notices must then be sent out to such persons advising them to voluntary and in such firearms during and within the proclaimed amnesty period. This is a police directive specifically targeting those people that have to make an audit in their prison whose firearms licenses had been uh, expired. And to say to me, oh, but it's not, it's still waiting for the amnesty period. This is a legal, this is a directive circulating in Northwest Province. And that's my proof, Chairperson, to say that again we are targeting or it is clear that with this amnesty and I said it again all the previous amnesties not one single firearm and, and, and if you've read all the other good things which I agree of course you want those people to come forward and give their illegal firearms but illegal firearm now became a technical issue because of the fact that the licenses have expired. But that technical issue has not been resolved. We're still waiting for the litigation. We've heard the papers have been submitted. And, and that's my whole issue and my whole point, Chairperson, as far as that specific issue is concerned. Chairperson, <coughs> Chair. I'm, I'm coming to closure now. There's only one point we are disagreeing on. I, I, I want to respond to that, Chair. Chairperson, what I don't understand to what Honorable Grunewald is raising is that when you have a firearm, if I'm a firearm owner and my firearm expires, the license expires, after that, that firearm is illegal. That is my understanding. So, no, Chair, if I may assist, that's part of the problem, and it, it's quite clear. Uh, but can I finish, Chairperson? Please, oh. can I not be disrupted? Because it's not Honorable, nice. Honorable Grunewald, <coughs> we listen to you. Could we now listen to the other members, please? I don't know when Honorable Grunewald determines when it's not illegal according to his understanding. Because according to law, even if you have a driver's license and it expires, you are given a period of amnesty of three or six weeks to, to go and renew your license. And if that does not happen, there's a, pros there's a legal process that unfolds. Now, he's coming up with something to say that as an owner of a firearm, if my license expires, now this amnesty period gives even an opportunity to those owners to come forward and say that I've got a firearm. And then you have a period to maybe to license your firearm, I think. But now what is wrong with that? What, why do people don't want to follow the legal route? Because this is a thing to say that why are people um, keeping firearms that are not licensed, Chairperson? Why are we promoting illegal activities? If you are a firearm owner, you have a responsibility to make sure that within the years that you are given or months that you must go and renew your firearm. And I think that as a committee, we must agree on that. Even on the point that he raised to say that in 2010, it's 20, 2010 and 2015 on the chart, in 20, 2005 and 2010, 
Honorable Kronabalt is saying that the reduction of firearms then, it was because of the 2010 uh, World Cup. That is not a true reflection because it was in 25, uh, 2005 that we had a huge, rege oh, there was a, a huge, um, good one in English, reductions of firearm. Even the margin chairperson, because we must look at the period. The period then was six months in 2005. And in 2013, the reason that the number re was reduced, it was because of the months that were there, because it was three months. So I think, chairperson, it is important that when we talk, uh, we talk with correct facts so that we don't uh, mislead. Because it's important as members of parliament, we encourage people to go and renew their firearm licenses. And the amnesty is giving our members or our communities that opportunity to go and renew. Thanks, Chair. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm starting here. I said I'll give them an opportunity and then DM will give us information. All right, DM, and then I'm coming back. Ask the acting commissioner to provide that information. Uh, Thank you, Honorable Chair. I am going to read a, a directive uh, that uh, we withdraws uh, the letter that was circulated in in the in the northwest. Uh, there was a direct subsequent to the uh, Houting High Court, the Pretoria Interim Order, Gun Owners of South Africa versus National Commissioner and Minister of Police. The National Commissioner on the 30th 7, 2018 send out a directive. Uh, then we had uh, the Provincial Commissioner Northwest sending another directive that was moving away from the directive of the National Commissioner. But then, once we became aware, we instructed that that letter should be withdrawn with immediate effect. Here with, I am going to read a letter dated the 2nd, 10, 2019, uh, it was circulated in the northwest. It's a reference number 27, stroke 5, stroke 2, stroke 1, over 42, stroke 1, stroke 2, stroke 1, 5. The inquiry is Major General Ascending and Brigadier Molate. It's addressed to all cluster commanders, South African Police Service Northwest, and also all station commanders, South African Police Northwest. The subject is implementation plan preparation for amnesty 2019-2020 instructions relating to the processing and receiving of firearms northwest and then it says one this office letter 27 stroke 5 stroke 2 stroke 1 over 42 stroke 1 stroke 2 stroke 1 dated 2019-917 refers Kindly note that the above mentioned circular is withdrawn with immediate effect until further notice. This letter is dated the, the 2nd of 10, 2019. It talks to the, the circular that was uh, circulating within the Northwest. Thanks, Chair. We, we, we will give a, there was a request that there must be, is it a directive that you, you said we must, we must have through you, Chair? We, we will provide what, uh, whatever the committee wants to, to have. But that is our, our understanding and we will, we will agree with what you are raising here about a separate process. I have two lost ends. Honorable Mapatsu and then Honorable Khurnava, a third one, Mafanya, done. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. And then Ter Blanche. Yeah, I, I think we are agreeing uh, as a committee here with those uh, clarific clarifications. Uh, we can't be seen as members of parliament to be promoting uh, illegal possession of firearms. Now, Honorable Fako here has just explained it very simple, that if you have got a driver's license, 
it expires. There is no uproar, there's never been an uprising about that because you know that you, they will arrest you because you're not competent to drive. Same applies with the 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 license the firearms license. You know when you go for applying there are conditions that this license is five years or twenty years. Now you have not renewed it. According to the law, if you did not renew it, that means your 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 firearm is illegal. But the, the government, uh, the Department of Police is saying, we are giving you an opportunity. We are giving you an opportunity that you can renew your, your, your license. The issue that I wanted to propose, share is that the, the backlog that you will be having, uh, it might be too big for the policy to, to deal with issuing of the licenses, uh, renewing the licenses very fast. And it might be disadvantaging genuine people who have uh, surrendered uh, their, 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 their guns. My proposal it is how about staggering uh, the implementation? You know, you deal with the backlog first, then you come to to the other ones that have been uh, applied renewal. You come to it. You stagger it because if you you, you don't do that, you are going to have a full of uh, the whole wall with uh, licenses. So if you stagger it, uh, you know, gradually you stagger it in, in, in renewal, in renewing, uh, I mean for, for the renewal, it will also encourage people uh, to come. There's, no, there's nothing about uh, taking arms from people to protect them. The fact of the matter is that we cannot also break the law that you know that you are given the condition that this license expires uh, in 2012 and you are reminded reminded then the government says here is an amnesty for you to renew your own uh, license and you can't be seen here as, an, as, 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 as members of uh, parliament to be seen to be encouraging people not to renew uh, their licenses. We should be seen to be uh, fighting against crime and say people must renew uh, their firearms. Lastly, say, uh, 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 Chair, it's, it's, it's that if you want to reduce uh, crime, how do you know that sometimes people who, who, with this license firearms are involved in criminal activities? So for if it has expired, it's upon you that you must go straight there and say, I want to renew. Now you are given an amnesty. The amnesty is saying we are giving you enough time to renew. Thank you, Chair. I have good news for you, Chairperson. Yeah. I agree with what the Honorable Mapatsu has said. But there's a big difference. <laughs> I, I don't know whether he understands what he really said. Let me first say, to use the example of the driving license. Please withdraw. No, 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 sorry. No, I don't, no, 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 sorry. My apologies. I don't mean it in a derogative way. No, I'm I meaning the... Impl no, no, I, I said I agree with him. Yes, no, 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 but then the last I, part was. Okay, we'll withdraw that. I, I don't. No, no, I withdraw yes, that. No, I'm, what I mean the implications. No, no, sorry. No, don't worry about that one. We're going to agree. Can I just use an example of the driving license to get perspective on that, chairperson? It's true. If your driving license is expired, 
and the traffic officer pulls you off, yes, you get a fine, but he does not confiscate your vehicle. And that's a difference. And that was exactly my private member's bill on this specific issue in the previous parliament, <coughs> where I said, if your firearm license has expired, then, yes, you must pay a fine, but give an opportunity to renew it. It, ha it has been rejected on a decisive vote from the chair at this moment. Maybe we have the wrong chair, but, but that aside. But why is I agree with the Honourable Mapatsu and, and what I meant by, if he, if he knew what he meant, is the following. I agree and I will go and accept an amnesty period and I've listened very carefully. And if we allow and say in that period, that's part of the conditions, that we say that people whose firearms licenses had expired, may apply for the renewal of the firearm, because that is what he said. But what I said, I, I wonder when he uh, understand what it meant, is the following. There's a difference in process between the renewal of a firearm license and the new appli or application for a firearm. That's, that's what I meant. So I will be quite satisfied. In fact, I think that's a good opportunity. In, in fact, that will solve the uncertainty amongst firearm owners because now we give them six months and say, within the six months, if your firearms license had expired, you now have an opportunity to go and renew your firearms. I will go with that, but not and in your firearm, and then you must go through the whole process to apply for a new license, for the renewal. And, and, and that's what I, uh, please don't take offense by what I've meant by that. I will accept that, that we give them six months, all those, because I agree. We cannot allow people to, uh, to, have, to have firearms illegally in their possession. At this moment, those people don't have it illegally. In fact, May I just also say to the committee, and I mean it very honestly, I mean, there's also a court case in 2009. You have people who's got, we refer to the old green license, who did not even apply for new licenses under the new law. Those licenses, the court determined, is still valid. So you don't even have to renew them. So you see, this, this is a quite a complex story. But I think, Chairperson, if this committee wants to make a contribution, as far as that is concerned. And we say yes in the amnesty period, six months, with uh, one time it starts, it doesn't matter. If we allow them to say to people in that period as well, if you want to renew your firearms, you go through the process of renewal of your firearm. That will be a huge uh, advantage for those people. So those people who want to keep their firearms, then we can say after that amnesty period, you had a fair chance. And if you didn't make use of it, then you must pay the consequences. So with that, Chairperson, I will fully agree on the renewal of the firearms licenses that has expired. Thank you. Honorable Mafania. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, Chair. The on-slide phase one planning, it says details of 2518 members were provided to division crime intelligence for screening and vetting. Currently, 162 members are screened, meaning remaining with 98, and then 109 vetted. So, uh, I propose within the very same six months that we talk about, I propose the date to be from December. And then in between places, we should be actually actually, actually be told how many within the six months period have been vetted before the commencement of that. And then lastly, the in slide four it says uh, on fa phase four destruction on destruction, it says here uh, compile a final destruction report. Now would, I would like to have the. Uh, uh, the report for 
2005 and 2010 when the weapons were de de destructed and uh, the reason being we would like to actually see as whether there will be a need for any kind of deviation in terms of what needs to happen in terms of destruction in this time thank you lunch and then mofoke and uh, then pico chairperson thank you I also have very good news for you. I'm also... Yeah, the two nadering has also worked uh, to a large extent. I feel really much more comfortable. Um, they are, you know, and, and, and just two things. Um, chairperson, I think first of all there's a huge a confusion still deputy minister out there amongst the public and that's why you know you know when i started i raised the issue that we were promised in the previous engagement that public participation or whatever you know i don't know how the police is going to deal that they are massive organization they can do it i really think that what we have been discussing here and the way forward should be discussed or, or you know just explained to people in more detail that will bring you know a lot of more calm and confidence in the process so obviously I support like I said in the beginning we support anything that will bring down a crime really we need to uh, then lastly and sorry General Maguena you know I we, we were still friends till this morning and I hope we can still carry on that way um, I am not, and that is just, you know, a concern. I am not really um, convinced yet that the police is properly prepared as we sit here now for the process. And But I'll leave it at that. And maybe we just need to say something about that. Jefferson, uh, some of the police stations, you know, after hours, you have one police official on, on duty there. And I can just imagine that those are some of the police stations that are possibly excluded, part of the 46. But also security measures. Very few police stations nowadays have access control. Um, you know, and where there is, you know, we have security guards there. You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe that is just something that we need to apply again. Thank you, Chairperson. I'm covered. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mofo King. And uh, then I'm going to Peacock and uh, Faku, you are covered. My Honorable Member Shimbeni. And then <laughs> he's the one I listen to the most because, you know, when he speaks, I really listen. These others, ah, they talk all the time. <laughs> But uh, thank you, Chairperson. It, I'm declaring. Please I'm just declaring. Honourable Member, withdraw, please. Honourable <laughs> Chairperson has withdrawn. Thanks, Chairperson. You'll be surprised that uh, Comrade Mafane, what he said, we agree. And then we are adding on saying that on the issue of the destruction, we note that it was done provincially. But the report of 2005 and 2010 on our discussion, we have a reason for doing that so that we can be able to advise and assist in the future of going forward and noting all that they said about the traveling and all that, the budget and all that. But we are saying that uh, that part is very important for us. I don't know if maybe Member Mafane forgot to say that uh, we don't know the companies they have used in all those provinces that maybe we can be given the lists of that we want to do some research on that work too. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Pico and then Shimbeni. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> mine would be <clears throat> on the issue of um, the fire um, amnesty According to my understanding, and while I was going through the document, 
it was clear that the purpose was for the expired license if you don't longer want to make use of it then you can take it and submit it at the police station the second one was for illegal firearms with this one immediately then there'll be investigations upon this illegal firearm that's my understanding the third one was for renewal of the licenses that's how i understand the presentation and the amnesty and for that record what i don't know if it's honorable terrell blanche or honorable uh, hurnevald that spoke of uh, um, the amnesty would be as if now seps will want to claim victory that this is what we've 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 collected and to them it says that it means that we are collecting illegal as well as those that are supposed to be renewed and at the ultimate end it will look as if now this is the achievement for subs of which i would like to 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 differ with him because immediately when this uh, when this uh, 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 these weapons or these firearms are submitted there'll be a segregative report that will state that this one is given based on illegal uh, uh, firearm this one is for this purpose and this one is for that purpose and of which at the ultimate and the report that we'll get it will state how many was for what so for me i don't know what is the problem of us we are looking we are looking for a corner or a point in a circle but we are all talking same language that's how i understand how the presentation is i thank you chair honorable members now please we the last the, please honorable members the last one is honorable shambeni then the deputy minister and then the chair closes Well, thank you very much, Chair. But the thing is, uh, when we talk about unlicensed firearm, uh, it's an offence or it's a crime to be in possession of an unlicensed firearm. That's it. It ends there. It when it comes to amnesty and all these things, uh, I think. Uh, we are talking now about a different thing that you did not renew your license once you have it in your position it's unlicensed that's wrong it's a crime now in the amnesty issue it must be stated that those who failed now will be given for such a period that is doing them a favor uh, but to have that firearm in your position when your license has expired, it's unlawful. It ends there. Now, I just want to remind the SAPS about uh, the arms cages used during the liberation struggles and the uh, proliferated by this. Uh, uh, apartheid regimes to either these battle stands we do have still have uh, arms that are being kept somewhere and somehow so i think in their operations they must include that because you find out that i've noticed in pumalanga that there were a lot of arms and ammunition ammunition that were found hidden somewhere meaning that we might still be having a lot and those arms if they are stolen they are not reported because they are not registered so i'm having my 20 or 200 firearms i've hidden them and then they get stolen and then i don't even have to report because they are illegal so i think we must go around check on that thank you very much honorable deputy minister we are in total agreement and you have the support of all the political parties. However, there is a request that you do consider 
the six months for the renewal process. Um, this is a bit of a concern and we do not expect you to answer it immediately because you need to separate the process now. And I'm not sure if SAPS has the ability to do both. Can you separate it? Because you now want renewal, an extension of renewal. As Honourable Member Shambhani said, this is actually, we are asking the Minister to give us a concession. It's a favour. We're requesting this concession. So you have to, Honourable Deputy, you don't need to respond to it, but could you take that request very seriously? Um, we are asking for a report, on detailed report on 2005, and 2010 with a breakdown of destruction, renewal, not just two columns, a more detailed breakdown. If you cannot provide it, could you prepare for this amnesty? That the statistics you give us for this amnesty be more accurate. That we have categories of renewal, categories of destruction, categories of illegal, what you consider to be illegal, because you have different categories. Could you actually capture those categories in your reports? Uh, uh, Deputy Minister, I'm saying that now the request the Minister of Police has made to the committee to support the declaration of the amnesty for the period of six months has been approved and that the date, the recommended date for commencement for the amnesty has provisionally been set at the 1st of December. So we expect the minister and the department to confirm that date when they regulate this process. We expect the committee expects or this is not just an expectation, the committee would like reports on this amnesty by the end of January when we return. When do we return? In beginning of February. Upon our return we would want the first report and not after six months. So we need, we require, would you like monthly or every second month? Every second month, because it's six months. We don't want at the end of the six months and then we discover all the loopholes. So we could say the first report should be upon our return, February, beginning of February 2020. We'll expect the first report. And then we agree that we are in agreement now that in terms of Section 138 of the Firearm Control Act, amnesty means the indemnity for, what do you now say? Indemnity, yes, we, the wording here must be very correct. What is your indemnity, Minister, Deputy? Possession. For the illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. Are we all in agreement? I'm listening. I want the summary to be correct. I do not want to be challenged in court, please. <laughs> uh, uh, just make sure that the chair didn't refer to 138, uh, but 139. As in section, in terms of section 139, one of the Firearm Control Act, the minister may notice, note in the Gazette to declare the firearm amnesty. According to section 139, one of the Firearm Control Act. Honorable members, that brings to the end. Sorry, Jay. No. Before, yes. before I can say it's gone, 
if you use the word, it, this is very technical. You said the committee request the minister. So do I understand it quite clearly that part of the conditions in terms of this section 139, uh, or I think the, the conditions is 138 if I, I'm not sure. Okay, it doesn't matter. That the part of the conditions will be that Owners of, illi of, of expired firearms will have in this period to have the opportunity to apply for the renewal. It's part of it. It's not a request. No, it's, it's a request. We are requesting the minister to consider this for now. So then I've got a problem because the minister can say, yeah, you request me, but I say no. A request, is, a request is, you decide, is it yes or no? Um, this is the only outstanding matter. I'm summarizing, that's what I'm saying. When we leave here, I can request the minister to do something and motivate for such a request. And the committee is certainly motivating for such a request. I'm not opening for discussion. Listen, please. While we are requesting now, can I just add something to the request that that there must be an information sort of whatever to inform the public properly about this. Thank you. Part of the summary, Minister, Deputy Minister, that's just this request that's outstanding. So, so may I ask you? If I know it's it's the time is running out, but this is very important here. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in agreement that this is the only outstanding matter. Okay, because, but, but um, can I say, Chairperson, this committee makes the decision, not the minister. The portfolio committee must approve the conditions and everything. If, if we approve, it's not a matter for the minister to consider it. We are the legal body to make the decision. And if we say that, yes, you can have amnesty, but part of that is the renewal of the firearms, as we've indicated, then those are the preconditions. Honorable, Honorable Khrunavad, I'm extremely cautious. If you listen to me carefully, I said, we are separating the process. And I'm not sure if the police has the capacity to do so. So I am, excuse me, I am reluctant to take a general approval on this because I doubt and I would like to know if this is possible. I do not want any legal ramifications after this. We do not want to take a decision in this portfolio committee which will be challenged in court as soon as we leave here today. So I'm respectfully requesting that we consider the capacity of the police to do so because this is another process which we are introducing into the amnesty process. May I then, just for recording uh, purposes, Jefferson, I, I keep my reservation on the approval or not uh, on this matter, because for me it's crucial. This is this is what we note, uh, uh, DM. You do not need to say yes or no. Um, we are saying that could you seriously consider this? Because if you can consider this, you would have. Um, uh, uh, firm support on the matter. No, thanks, Chair, and thanks to the committee. Uh, I think we have had a f very fruitful interaction with the with the committee, and we are happy that you 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 support the 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 the, the amnesty issue that has been put before before yourselves here and we have had uh, your request as well 
we will go back and have a discussion ar around that. I agree with you that we need to be cautious on this matter uh, because there is a law that has been passed by yourselves which is now in operation uh, and which has created the environment which we, we discussed about earlier on about the court cases and all those things. So we are alive to that. We'll go back and uh, and interact with the leadership of the police and uh, and come back to you with regard to how we can go about handling that specific uh, request going forward. But generally, we are happy and uh, grateful that uh, you 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 the committee reached the deliberations that they have reached uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Honourable members, that brings to the close the business of today. We are in agreement with the amnesty. There is no subject to. You cannot say you approve subject to. So we are in agreement. We are requesting the minister to seriously consider the, um, the application for renewal. This would ensure that we do not have any further legal challenges, that this process can be engaged in, and please um, indicate to the minister that we would like this process to start um, as soon as possible, and uh, we would like uh, all legal challenges to be averted, um, and that this process uh, is, is actually free of legal challenges. If it's free of legal challenges, it will be easier for us to convince the people of South Africa to participate. Um, honorable members, I really would like you to um, applaud yourselves for this kind of positive engagement. It has been one of the tricky situations we've navigated, but I think um, there's light at the end of the tunnel. The light is not even at the end of the tunnel. We have reached an amicable solution on the matter and there's an amicable agreement um, essentially there's an agreement um, on the matter uh, deputy minister co uh, convey our appreciation to the minister for the team that has been presented today they represented you very well and uh, convey to the minister that we accepted his apology but that the meeting was very well managed thank you Thank you, honourable members. That brings to an end the business of today. Thank you.